Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon. Oops, somebody else came in. Hi, everyone. Hiya. Morning. Hello. Oh, hello. Boy, people are coming in fast and furious now, Ellen. <laughs> like, well, Yay. We're hitting admit, 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 admit. Oops. How do exciting. I do it? All right. Oops. Well, welcome everybody. I think we'll just, Courtney and I will just try to, we'll try to keep catching people as people um, join us. If if we've never met before, um, my name is Rachel Bauer and I'm the PI of ATE Central, which acts as an information hub for the AT community. And I'm so thrilled to be here today with um, Ellen Haas and, and Courtney Larson from the American Association of Community Colleges to talk about ATE Connects as we prepare for the 2024 ATE PI conference, which is kind of amazing. 2024, here we are. So exciting to be back, like fully, fully in person again. So um, I'm really just here to sort of help provide support. Both Courtney and I are going to be providing support today. Um, they're going to go ahead and introduce themselves and we're going to just dive right in. Ellen, do you want to kick things off? <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Rachel, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for the, for our information session. We're going to keep this fairly informal. Um, I will ask that you mute uh, when, if you're if we're not asking questions right now. Um, I'm going to go through the AT Connect sessions. Um, if you've got questions at any time, certainly put them into chat. As I said, uh, Courtney Larson, my associate, is on to answer questions as well as Rachel. Um, and then when we break for questions, you're welcome to come on camera. Um, we'll keep it real informal. I'm happy to answer any questions about AT Connects or any questions about the, the conference at this point. Um, but we'll get started on our lovely AT Connect sessions. So um, what is AT Connects? If you attended last year, you are familiar with this format. Uh, if, if you are new or need a refresher, um, I think one of the hallmarks of the AT conference um, is um, that uh, it's the opportunity to engage with colleagues and peers from across the country to share promising practices and lessons learned and to build collaborations and make connections with the AT community. And we provide that opportunity to all projects and centers um, to engage in the sharing of information, resources, and materials that are related to your programs. So to do that, all projects and centers, with the exception of those that are first-time ATE awardees, are required to participate in an ATE Connect session by hosting a conversation conversation hub, and I'll go over what that means momentarily. Um, so again, our AT Connects, it's, it's primarily two networking and information sessions uh, with refreshments, very important, that uh, we run in the exhibit hall on Thursday, October 24th. Um, each project and center is uh, requested and required to host a conversation hub. And you would do that by signing up by the deadline of September 19th. Um, and once signed up, uh, we would assign you a to a conversation hub, give you a number and a session, and your number and grouped according to discipline area. So you'll see we've got signs all over that tell you where to go, um, but the point is to try to create um, communities and make it easy to find one another. So, so a reminder to mute your, your um, mic, because we can hear background noise. Just a gentle reminder. Sorry, Ellen, I just wanted to. No, thank you. Uh, just uh, so when you sign up for AT Connects, as I said, you'll select the discipline area that most closely relates to your grant and you'll be scheduled for that session and, and grouped accordingly. So the session schedule is provided on the screen for your reference. It's also available on the conference website, um, but you'll see that we hold these sessions um, 1030 to 1215 on Thursday um, in the morning and then again in the afternoon from 345 to 530. And these are this is dedicated time. So there's nothing 
else going on at the conference. That's how important these sessions are to be able to network um, with other projects and centers. Um, so again, the expectation is that that everyone will be hosting a conversation hub unless you are you know, brand new, brand newly funded to ATE um, and engaging in these networking sessions. So what is a conversation hub? So again, each project and center that signs up will be assigned a hub. Uh, we do ask that at least one team member staff the hub during the session. You can certainly trade off. Um, that's why it's always good to attend the conference in teams. So someone can uh, staff the hub while someone else does networking and perhaps you switch places. Um, so a conversation hub includes a, a cafe style table two chairs, a stand that fits a 22 by 28 poster graphic, and two materials holders that fit standard eight and a half by 11 handouts. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting lens shot of uh, what the exhibit hall looks like uh, so for these information sharing sessions and some examples of individual hubs and posters and handouts. Again, we'll go over all of these, but just to give you some visuals of how these look and some of the engagement that you will see. Again, the goal of these is to promote discussion and networking. So how to sign up? Again, you're required to do so by September 19th. You can do so by going to the conference website. Um, there's a direct URL there. I'm sure Courtney can put it into chat as well. Uh, you would enter the AT Connect submission form. You're required to enter your grant number, um, and then your grant information will pre-populate. If you need to make changes to that information, be it the, the PI information or you want to change the title of the grant slightly, uh, sometimes the titles more from once you first propose to where you are now, you're certainly welcome to do so as that's how it would be printed in the conference program. And from there, the most important piece is a very simple form is that you'll be asked to submit an abstract that describes your project or your center. Uh, we do ask that you be thoughtful about this and you pers uh, you submit something that's concise and descriptive. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, over a hundred of these going on at a time. Um, so it's very helpful for people when they're looking through uh, to look at those abstracts to determine um, who they're going to go visit and talk with and engage with. So again, it helps attendees in navigating these sessions. And you get to do all of this in 600 characters, uh, but we do provide sample abstracts on the conference website. Uh, in terms of discipline area, as I mentioned, uh, we do group these by discipline. We ask that you select the discipline area that most closely aligns with your grant. We certainly realize that uh, you could potentially, your project or center could fall into several disciplines, but we ask that you select that primary discipline, that you not default to general ATE. As a good rule of thumb, you could look at how ATE Central has categorized your grant on their website. Um, so if, if we have a whole bunch of people that select general ATE, uh, we will be reclassifying you if you are more in engineering. So just as a, uh, you know, a, a caveat there, and if you've got questions on how to classify your grant, certainly reach out to us. Um, but that is this that makes up the, the form. It's really going in, verifying your grant information, submitting an abstract, and selecting your discipline area. To prepare for AT Connects, again, once everything has come in, we assign you to your session and we give you a hub number. Um, we ask that you prepare a sign or a graphic. You have a 22 by 28 display space. The options for printing that poster are to print your own, bring your own, as, as we don't have um, printing capability on site. Uh, or we do have a service provider, Arata, uh, where if you wanted to submit your um, print ready art to them, they will print it for you and place it in your sign holder on site uh, for uh, a fee of $90.50. Um, that print ready artwork would be due October 4th. Uh, once all the hubs are assigned, you'll get your um, notification of what number, what session you're in. We'll send you a link to Arata's portal and the exhibitor kit um, or the service kit. If you want to look at that service kit now, it is actually on the, the conference website as well as a print template for the poster. So again, that portal um, and all this information comes to you once you've signed up for a hub. But if you want to take a look at it now to know how to prepare and get your poster ready for printing, uh, that information is available on the website. 
We also ask that you bring some handouts. We suggest about 50 copies, the, the options there to copy your own and bring your own. Um, again, we don't have copy facilities on site, or if you want to, to copy your own and say you wanna bring some additional handouts to put on your cafe table, which you're welcome to do so, um, you can ship these ahead of time, again, to Arata to arrive to their warehouse by October 21st. There's a flat rate for shipping uh, that includes shipping storage, and then they will place the handouts. So your box or whatever you have shipped will be at your hub at the time of your session. We ask that you don't ship materials to yourself at the hotel as the hotel may refuse shipment. Um, but if you want to either bring them in your luggage or ship to Arata ahead of time, those instructions are included in the service kit. And I do also want to note there is no um, audio visual or electrical access. We have had people bring laptops or iPads or small um, equipment or materials to place on the cafe table. You're welcome to do that, provided they don't require an external power source. Um, but again, um, we ask that you, you, you limit you know, large visual displays or anything other than what would fit on your cafe table or in your sign holder, because the point is to make uh, connections and to network and to give everyone the same um, um, footprint in terms of what they're displaying and sharing with others. So as mentioned on our website is the, the template uh, for the sign and also the service kit. So just you could see some examples of what that looks like. And I did want to make a note about the, the posters. These are not meant to be academic posters by any means. Um, they're really to be used for your center logos, some basic information about your grant activities. Um, we don't have specific guidelines for content, but again, graphics, visuals, a little bit of information tends to be more eye-catching um, and accessible than content that is really text heavy. So, you know, you want to think about it as your elevator pitch or a graphic that identifies your project or center and its overarching purpose. Uh, you could use a QR code in the corner, as someone did here, for people to scan for more information. And certainly any materials or supplemental materials you bring to put in the, the holders or on your table can share additional information. Uh, but again, I do want to stress it's not meant to be an academic poster. Um, you know, putting very small text on these would be very difficult to read. So just giving some examples of um, posters that have a, you know, just a clean and a bit of information that encapsulates um, their projects. You know, here's one, if you can see, that's primarily just a, a visual, but the handouts uh, give more information about the program. If you are a first-time grantee, as I, I mentioned, if you're newly funded in, in uh, fiscal year 2024, you're certainly welcome to host a Conversation Hub, but you're not expected or required to do so. Uh, we would ask you at your, your first conference, your first time being funded, to, to navigate through the other projects and centers and, and network. Um, but you also have the option of preparing and bringing a copy of a, a one page handout to place in our new to ATE grantee corner. So we have holders available in the lounge areas of the exhibit hall specifically for those that are new to ATE. And centers and larger projects that are looking for partners and collaborators, they do look through these to see who has been newly funded uh, to mine those for information. So we do um, you know, ask you to take advantage of that as something you would like to prepare. For those that want to prepare a one-pager, again, information on our website as well as examples of one-pagers, but you'd want to include some basic information since you're just starting out. Certainly your, your name, your project title, the goal of your project, some objectives, collaborations or partnerships, and a couple highlights that you're planning to do in your first year and contact information uh, for the PI and, and, and co-PIs. So this is an example of a, of a one pager from a couple of years ago. I don't know if this was last year or the year before, um, but you, we suggest you bring about 50 copies. Um, you would see an ACC attendant. We have someone who is staffing the hall uh, for where to place these, um, or you can see what they look like. Uh, so this new to AT grantee corner and sign holders, and, and yes, it's low tech, but actually highly effective um, for people to come and, and pick up materials and to engage. You're not expected to staff or hang out at that area. You're welcome to if you'd like, um, but they really are just a, a way for you to share information about your projects while you are also taking advantage of networking um, during these AT Connects sessions. Um, and they're also strategically placed around the networking lounges, as you'll see, we've starred where they are here, uh, where people are um, uh, taking, uh, uh, engaging in conversation. 
And speaking of networking lounges, a little bit of fun in AT Connects, as I said, we do have great refreshments. We do a heavy break in the morning and a, a light reception um, in the afternoon. Those are pictures of cake pops we had from the 30th anniversary last year, but we always have some fun desserts in the afternoon. Uh, I mentioned the networking lounges, which are throughout. And something new we're doing this year is we will have a little stage towards the back of the hall and some, some limited seating where we're doing AT Connects countdowns. Um, so there's another picture of a lounge area. But uh, these are fast 10 minute sessions where we're asking people to count down in their top 10 or less best practices, technology trends or lessons learned in advancing STEM technician education. So there'll be four sessions in each ATE connects in this in this area. You can come in for one, you can come in for part of one, um, that these are some sample sessions that will be on the program. And I don't know that I've notified these folks that their sessions have been accepted yet, but they'll be notified shortly. So if you're on and you see this, congrats. <laughs> but some of the examples of, you know, top five ways to use AI. Use AI. So again, it's five slides, 10 minutes, very quick sessions. And we're trying something very interesting in this little tiny theater area. You'll have headsets you'll put on um, for these sessions um, in order to hear since we're in the, the large hall. Um, we'll also have ASL interpretation there as well. Um, so we'll have the schedule posted in the in the program and in the exhibit hall. So again, those will be um, coming out shortly and are just something new we're trying uh, in uh, the AT Connect sessions. So before I turn it over to questions, I did want to mention just a few other things. We have an upcoming webinar on Thursday, October 10th, and that's where we go over the conference agenda in detail uh, and really how to navigate the event. Um, so the, the full conference program, including all, our, all the AT Connect sessions are posted by that time. So that's when we'll go over the full agenda and, and talk about the conference further. Uh, upcoming deadlines, a student application deadline. I do want to mention because that's coming right around the corner. Uh, the conference does offer a wonderful opportunity for students to attend. Uh, each project or center can nominate two students to attend, and we offer up to, to 60 scholarships to students to come, uh, where we provide them with complimentary registration and three nights lodging, and the project or center is responsible for the student's airfare or travel expenses. Um, students participate in a student poster session that's held separate apart um, from the AT Connects. That is truly an academic poster and a different session on Wednesday evening uh, where there's a, a poster session reception in their honor. They're honored by NSF and get some awards on Friday morning through a breakfast. They participate in a student industry and networking session. They've got an educational tour of air and space and some other STEM focused sessions. So it's, it's actually a wonderful opportunity for students to engage in the conference. If you're interested in nominating students, uh, you would just go to the conference website. They fill out an application form and we'll be notifying um, students and PIs of their acceptance. Uh, we turn those around very quickly by the 13th of September. If you've got any questions on students, um, I'll ask Courtney to put her, her email into chat because she is uh, the one who heads up all of our student activities, but we do want to make you aware of that deadline. Certainly reserving your conversation hub that is coming up September 19th. We do need you to reserve one so we know where to place you and how many we have in each session. We get you all numbered so we can get uh, those coordinated. And certainly, I can't believe it's coming up this quickly, but yes, the registration and the hotel reservation deadline coming up on September 26th. And contact information, the, the website will be continually updated. Uh, we do, um, we are in the process of scheduling all the sessions now that came in through our conference call for sessions. And I anticipate I'll have the preliminary agenda posted um, early the week of September 16th. Um, and then that will be followed by once all the AT Connect sessions um, are in, we'll have all the conversation hubs uh, posted in early October. Uh, but we'll be sending out notification as soon as the preliminary agenda is posted so people can take a look and start planning to attend. That is all I had on AT Connect, so I'm going to stop sharing and Rachel, Courtney, see if there were any questions or anything um, we can elaborate on. All right. Not a lot. Um, folks did ask about, you know, the whole situation for new grantees, and I think we covered that. If there are any questions, go ahead and raise a hand. 
Um, so Linda has asked about, do we need to also include the NSF logo on our materials? If so, are there requirements around size formatting or what information to include? It's recommended that you use the 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 logo. And again, um, you can find the logo on NSF.gov. I think Courtney put that into chat and how, you know, what logo you should use. Um, certainly, if you want to put in the standard uh, language around <laughs> the NSF disclaimer, you're welcome to do so. Um, but many people do include the, the NSF logo on their uh, AT Connects materials or conference materials. I'm sorry, I didn't even scroll down far enough to see that you'd put that in, Courtney. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything, that, that there were any questions that we didn't address in chat. Did you see anything, Courtney? Um, there's just a recent one about expectations for uh, people in no cost extensions. Oh, yes. In terms of that. attending the conference or? It says yeah, conference attendance. attendance. It sounds like they're just asking if you're in a no cost year, do you, are you still expected to attend? If you're in a no cost year, you're, it depends on the year you were, if it's your first no cost extension. So I would say the best way to do that is to email us. We'll take a look at it, your grant because it's one of those, if you're just in a brand new no cost extension, it, it you have some expectation of, of being there, we, we, we would have you classified as active or not. If this is a no cost extension, you're like in your, you've been in a no cost extension and this is your second or third, there is not an expectation for you to attend. You're certainly welcome to do so. Um, you would have two spots to attend, but you would be responsible for paying for your registration. So that's one, the no costs get a little confusing depending on if there was a supplement involved and what it did to your award dates. So it's best just to email us directly for questions on participation. And then Bonnie's asking about the expectations for the countdown sessions, I think. Bonnie, those are specifically things that people applied to do. That's not something that everybody does. C oh. Correct. Everyone is required to um, participate in ATE Connects unless you are brand new to ATE uh, by hosting a conversation hub. AT Connects Countdown is something we did through the conference call for sessions. So people applied to do these short little 10-minute uh, flash sessions. And we're just going to run a few of those during each of the AT Connects uh, sessions um, in an area, uh, you know, towards the back of the hall. Okay. Thank you. I was, I, my PI would probably want to present. So I don't know if that, if he would need to bring his own presentation. Is there like a projection behind it or anything? He, he would have had to apply for this as a, as during the call for sessions. And that's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all that's, that's done. So it's, it's done. It's a new thing this year. So if it's repeated next year, then he, he or she can apply then to do Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Goodness, I can't believe we're at 123 and it's like crickets. Anybody else have questions? Raise a hand. This is. <laughs> well, I was like, I'll be succinct. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if anyone has questions. <laughs> I'll show pretty pictures. <laughs> um, there's such good information on the website and, and Ellen and Courtney are always super responsive. So if the minute as you click hang up, you're like, oh, I meant to ask this. I, I do have a question oh, if, sure. if I can. So I've already submitted our abstract for um, the connects. Is it possible to change the title of it? Because what I did was I just left it as the grant title, but it's really sort of a subtopic of the grant and the title might be more informative if I changed it or modified it. Is that still possible or? Yes, you can still modify. It? Courtney, he can still go in, correct? Yes, you can email me directly and um Okay. send me the change or you just can complete a different form a new form and uh, we can swap it out whichever okay. way you want to do it okay thank you mm -hmm. and i think laura has her hand up too yes good morning thank you i was wondering if those of you with experience could give those of us who are brand new to ate and new grantees um some tips for the best way to navigate i know we're gonna do that october 10th but you know just some suggestions for brand new people. 
Well, I will say this. If you're brand new, you're going to be going to the Getting Started Workshop, I assume. And the Getting Started Workshop will help you with a lot of things, including introducing to a lot of people who you can talk with about, you know, upcoming sessions. It, it is hard to choose at the conference. I don't think there's any question that there are so many good things to see. And, um, but I think once you get the program going through ahead of time, you know, looking, the program has a lot of good information in it, going through ahead of time and circling the things that seem to appeal to you. And hopefully if you bring someone else splitting up, Mm -hmm. So you can both go to different things and fill each other in. It's 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 comforting to travel in packs, but in this case, I think it's nice sometimes to divide and conquer a little bit, you know? So I don't know if other people, if anyone else would like to chime in or Ellen, obviously, or Courtney have could have all kinds of good things to share too. Well, I, I mean, I will just echo what you said about kind of sp splitting up if you're with a grant team, spending time looking at the conference program, really looking at those abstracts for the AT Connect session so you can maximize your time um, in, in targeting that networking. Um, in addition to the Getting Started workshop new this year when we put out the conference program, we're doing a, a speed networking session for people that are kind of new to the conference or newer to ATE to engage with um, uh, more experienced or veteran PIs is to ask basic questions. So that might be an opportunity to um, engage with some people uh, at the front end of the conference before it starts. Um, but it really is just being prepared to kind of hit the ground um, um, running and, and really utilize those AT Connect sessions as a way to um, engage and make contacts. And I would also just say that it is an extremely friendly group. If you've never been here before, this is a very friendly conference. Like everyone's super helpful. You'll meet lots of new people. Um, you'll go home with tons of, you know, business cards and phone numbers and interesting information. So it's, it, it's a really fun and friendly conference. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to say to follow up on the no cost extension comments um, regarding AT Connects, if you are coming to the conference, we encourage you to, to host an AT, Index, AT Connects hub because you have a lot to share about your project. Absolutely. So while you wouldn't be required to do so, we would encourage you to do so. Are there any other questions? Let's see. There was just a comment from Robin about having to deal with her grant's office or their grant's office, which sounds like typical. Oh, we got somebody who's raised a hand. Bob? Bob Hayton looks like, there you yeah, are. Okay, you're good to get my mic to work. Yeah, uh, no what was the October the 10th uh, reference there for? That is for a webinar, an orientation to the AT conference webinar. So that's where we will go through the conference agenda in detail because we will have it posted and we'll talk about navigating the event and we just distill further into some of the, the session types and, and just, you know, kind of just give you a, a broader look at the conference once we have the conference program posted so that we hold that on October 10th. Okay. Is, that a, is there a link to that? Um, Courtney, Courtney can put one in link. chat. Yes. Yeah, so you to sign up for that. And that is also recorded. Mm -hmm. And that is a webinar, right? Ellen, that is a webinar because we typically have meeting, well over a hundred people, people attend that. Yeah. yeah. Just FYI. Oh, she, Courtney, very kindly, of course, put it back in again. So it's right at the bottom if you scroll all the way down in chat. Okay, thank you. Sure. Carl? Hi, can you hear hey. me okay? Yeah, you're good. Yes. Yeah, Courtney, I, um, yeah, Courtney, I emailed you with you a little bit. I just 
want to just <laughs> verify. So I, I just um, had uh, a co-PI on my new grant uh, apply for the student um, scholarship thing. He's just, um, I, I've been to ET a couple of times and I can't remember what the um, the student section looked like. I remember walking through it, but uh, Do you he's... mean the student poster? Do you mean the student poster session? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so he's, but he's, he's not, he, he, he went through my, my certificate, my brand new certificate that was kind of a product of the last grant, our initial grant here at my program. And he's going to be a co-PI on this new grant. He, I really would like him out there. Um, now he's not like a high school student or even just short out of high school. He's already a working professional with a master's degree and all this kind of stuff. But that, Courtney, you said that was going to be all right. He's not going to feel weird there or anything. Okay. Yeah, though that there's a uh, wide variety of there's students. A huge as long range. As, yeah, so we we have some that are dual enrollment students that are still in high school. We have some that are returning students to community colleges that have you know re reverse articulation, have master's degrees. There are some that are recent alum of the the community college ATE program. So it really does range um, in terms of participation of students. So okay, and, and frankly. Yep. It is so packed in there that it's hard to even tell who's who. So it's not like <laughs> people are standing by those poster sessions and it's, it's a, it is very crowded and very active. He'll, he'll feel fine. Okay. And Courtney, I might email you uh, um, just for guidance as far because I'm trying to think about what we'll put together for him to talk about. Um, sure. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll email you later about that as I start to think about that more. And, and just to piggyback on that, when we do uh, accept the students, the students have their own information webinar, um, which we, we, we walk through all the student requirements. We walk through the poster session. We have templates for posters and some suggested content. So we go through all of that. So there'll be some guidance for the students that are accepted so they know what's expected of them and what they, they put together. Uh, that's you know separate from yeah, AT Connects and the rest of the conference. <laughs> is, is that something I can attend as well? Sure. Um, we, the, the PRs are welcome to attend with the okay. students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes, we encourage anyone who's interested in nominating students to have them come. We, we love the students. <laughs> and I've got quite a few industry lined up to engage with them for the student networking session already. So I'm excited about that. All right. All right. Well, I think unless anyone, any last questions or I... All right, well, thank you for everybody for coming. Great turnout today. And of course, thank you to Ellen and Courtney for all this wonderful information. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you in like a month and a half. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you all. I just wish I had a little more time to prepare. <laughs> Let me clarify that, 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 yeah. that sound, yes. <laughs> um, and just as you're aware, this webinar, this uh, session was recorded. So we'll have this recording and the slides on the, the website uh, either later today or tomorrow. Actually, we need to get them captioned. So it'll probably be tomorrow. Right. Good to see everybody. Great. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye. Take care. Bye.